Welcome to this soul-lifting broadcast which has been put together for your spiritual growth and to make greatness come on right where you are. Be sure to make the best of this moment as God takes the lead in all that concerns you. Isaiah chapter 40, I've titled this message, let's get into the message very quickly. I've titled this, Ego Believer, Speed Without Exhaustion. Ego believer, speed without exhaustion. How do you live through 2024 and beyond as an ego believer who will enjoy speed without exhaustion? That's what we're discussing today. How you, how you will actualize that in your own life. Isaiah chapter 40, I'll read from verse 28 down to 31, New King James Version. It said, have you not known, have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth, young people, who are to be known for their strength, the Bible says even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall, especially in the kind of season that we're living in. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Yeah. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Lord bless the reading of his word. In this passage of the scripture, which is a second anchor scripture for the year, a believer is likened to an eagle. So they shall mount up with wings like the eagle. The eagle believer is the one that is able to enjoy speed without exhaustion. That can key in into the strength of the most high God. Can I quickly point out very significantly certain words from this passage of the scripture that is important for you to take cognizance of. One is the description of our God as the repository of strength, the omnipotent God, the one who does not need support or encouragement. Uh, the one that the, 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 the prophet was asking here, have you not heard? Don't you know? You are aware that the God, the everlasting God, is neither weak nor is weary. All right? <laughs> he said, neither faint nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. That's the God that we're plugging into. That's the God that we're plugging into. You can't plug into the ocean and lack water. We're not talking about the well behind your house. That well can lack water in dry season. I hope somebody is following me today. Even your borehole may refuse to bring out water in certain seasons. But you go to the Atlantic. Have you ever been there and you can't find water? It's, it's to describe to us what the potency of our God looks like. Have you not heard? Don't you know? Have you not been informed that a God, the everlasting God, it never faints nor is weary? It's the one that the Bible describes as the God who does not sleep nor slumber, but yet is never exhausted. Yeah. Never faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. You know, you can search many things on Google, but his own understanding, <laughs> the depth of his wisdom, yeah, unfathomable, unsearchable. That's the God you are plugging into for wisdom. It means you will never run out of wisdom. You always know the next thing to do. I say you always know the next step to take. It means you will never be stranded. Because a stranded person is the one that is perplexed, despondent, not knowing the next thing to do. This is the God that we are plugging into. This is the making of an ego believer. When you are able to plug into the God whose understanding is unsearchable. Who is never weak nor faint. It is the plugging into him that guarantees that you also will not be weak nor faint as we go into this new year. Glory be to Jesus. I said glory be to Jesus. It's important that you recognize that it's 
possible to be weary. It is possible to faint, and it is possible to fall. That's what the prophet is saying here. Put the scripture on the screen for me. Yeah. It is possible to be weary. It is possible to faint. It is possible to fall. It gives power to the weak. That means there will be always weak people. And to those who have no might, it increases strength. As you go into this year, whatever seeks to suck away your strength, uh, this is the year that you override them. Amen. In the name of Jesus, as you remain on eagle's wing, you override them. Amen. He said, even the youth shall faint and be weary. Fainting, weariness, and falling are three important things that are described in this scripture. And I don't know about you, uh, it's almost impossible that you and I will not have any history of either weariness, fainting, or falling. I've had a fair share until I started to work with God more closely in certain areas of life. Yeah. As a counselor uh, I sit, uh, uh, and a coach, I sit with people all the time and I see people sometimes perplexed, weary, fainting, that needs resuscitation. Sometimes a whole organization can be fainting. A nation can need resuscitation, let alone a human being. But the Bible says that when we walk with God, it can take us above weariness, above fainting, above falling. This year, that's the realm that you operate from. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The reason is because God specializes in renewing our strength. Said they shall renew, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. For those of us who participated in the fast the last 20 days, as you have been waiting on the Lord, the Lord has been renewing your strength. Even when you don't see it, it's working. Even when you can't feel it, it's working. It is when you, uh, uh, when, when there's an adversary ahead and you see how God takes you over as if nothing happened, that's when you will know what is going ahead of you into this year. Psalm 103 and verse number 5, the scripture says, who satisfies your mouth, he was describing God. Yeah, uh, from the beginning, you know, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget all the benefits, who forgive your, your iniquities and heals your sicknesses. Verse, three, uh, verse 5 says, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Look at that scripture again. It satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagle. Somebody say 2024. God satisfies my mouth with good things. Say my youth is renewed like the eagle. Say it again. Say my youth is renewed like the eagle. So I'm strengthened mentally, emotionally, uh, physically, spiritually. Say I will not fail. I will not fall. I will not falter. In the name of Jesus. All who believe shall believe in Amen. Very important. Those three words especially. Weariness, fainting, falling. Weariness, fainting, falling. If you don't know how important that is, I need you to study the life of Esau. Esau. Esau gave the excuse of weariness for selling his bat right. The excuse of weariness. Jacob, his brother, was approached by him for food. The stew of lentil, red stew, the scripture call, call, calls it. And Jacob said to Esau, <laughs> give me your bad right if you want this. You see, when somebody suffers we from weariness, either emotionally or spiritually or otherwise, or, 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 or mentally fatigued, they start to make wrong decisions. Yeah. The priorities become upside down. Esau said to Jacob, give me food and let me eat. What is my birthright to me, seeing that I am weary or I'm fainting? The Bible says, so Esau sold his birthright. 
Just like that. Esau sold his Batrat. Esau said, look, I'm about to die. <laughs> what is this Batrat to me? King James Batrat says, uh, he, he, he puts it another way. If you can find it, put it on the screen for me. King James Version, uh, you know, renders it slightly differently. Uh, it, it says, I, I, uh, I'm at the point of death to die. And what profit shall this bad right do to me? You see, this person is still talking. Oh. Eh? He came from the field and he, he exaggerated the situation because of weariness. He said, I'm about to die. If you're about to die, your brother should rush food to your mouth. In fact, you don't need food. If you're about to die, you need water. Yeah, and you need CPR. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Not food. If you're about to die. He exaggerated the situation. Somebody, you have exaggerated your marital situation too much. Giving yourself the latitude to misbehave. Fornicating and adulterating all over the place. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know that's the root word for adultery. It's to adulterate. Yeah. You adulterate destiny by mixing other spirits with it, other souls with it. That's what you're doing. Adulterating your destiny. It's like when they adulterate petroleum product. It cannot function. Yeah. I'm just warning somebody here, you can't continue adultery and think all will be well. All will not be well. Listen to me. All will not be well. It's a new year. Step away from adultery. It's a new year. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Stop giving useless excuses. Hebrews chapter 12, listen to me. Uh, 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 I think verse uh, 16 or so. The Bible is not talking to us about the same Esau. That same Esau. What he did with food. The Bible equates it to adultery. Yeah. Said, lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for a morsel of food sold his birthright. Singles, listen to me. Whatever excuse you give for messing around, you're just selling your birthright. You're behaving like Esau. I didn't write the Bible. Oh, see. <laughs> Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for a morsel of food so this battle. What excuse did he give? I can't control myself. I'm about to die. Yeah. Like we say in my language, hunger is killing me. Yeah. You know, we, 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 we exaggerate things with our word. Yeah. Yeah. We exaggerate things with our word. I don't know how it sounds in the Hebrew language where that was interpreted. Maybe it's just like the Yoruba language that says everything is killing me. Yeah. And that's why it's interpreted like that. I'm about to die. We just use all kinds of useless excuses to misbehave when you can trust God for strength. Before the spirit of loss will finish your marriage, trust God for strength to take lustfulness out of your life this year. Somebody say with me today. Stop giving useless excuses for not appropriating grace for the fulfillment of your destiny. God is counting on you. He said to them who lack strength, he increases might. Strength to push on in business, in marriage, in your spiritual life, God wants to supply. That's what we're saying today. The ego believer is the one that can gain speed without exhaustion. That business can do better, and you don't have uh, to be sick, you know, carried from hospital to hospital. You don't have, you know, uh, to, to get into wrong things to make that business do better, to make that marriage do better, to make life go forward. God is the one that gives strength. If you are in Christ, you are a new creature. According to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, all things are passed away, all things have become new. And Ephesians 2 and verse 6 says, we are seated with him. He made us to sit with Christ. You know, we are seated at the right hand of God with Christ. 
in heavenly places. You can't be seated in that high position and on earth you are behaving like a nobody, like a pedestrian, living anyhow. No. Your heavenly position must reflect in earthly places, must reflect in the kind of life you live. Is somebody still with me today? In 2024, we are airborne and we will enjoy stress. Weaknesses will not pull us down. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the moment you start to over-celebrate weaknesses rather than drawing strength from God, you open yourself up for attacks. Yeah. You open yourself up for attacks. You open yourself up for attacks. The devil causes you to over-celebrate your weakness. Use that as an excuse for misbehaving. You don't know you are opening the door for more spiritual attack. Yeah. So life has a way of taking away strength and power. From man has a way of doing that, just taking away power and taking away strength from men and women. But what we, how we are supposed to live, is, is to trust God to bring about the activation of our positioning in Christ. Yeah, and uh, 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 and for it to become our reality so that we don't live like the ordinary people, like people who don't know Christ. God has given us the ability to deal with frustration, discouragement, depression, and anything that depletes our strength. And we must build that ability this year. We must build on it. He's given us the ability, the grace to deal with frustration, discouragement, depression, and anything that depletes our strength. We must leverage that divine ability and that grace this year. First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23, uh, the apostle Paul writing there and uh, he, 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 he made this pronouncement and prayer. He said, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may uh, your spirit, soul, and body, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved, blameless to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means it's the will of God that we are preserved, spirit, soul, and body, preserved in strength, preserved, useful to him, preserved, presentable to him. Not just, you know, anyhow, anyhow, anyhow. No, but preserved. Preserved. May God preserve you this year. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me run through in the next couple of minutes quickly signs that your strength is depleted. And these signs are things that will help you uh, to, you know, to channel your focus this year and pray for God to renew your strength. When you are mentally perplexed, it means that your strength is depleted. Mental, uh, when you are mentally perplexed, you suffer from mental laziness, distractions, or necessary distractions. Things that are not important will get your attention. You'll be starved of wisdom, inability to resolve complex issues. It's for people who are mentally perplexed, you know, inability to overcome mental barriers and mental blockage and break molds that have been set in industries and, you know, in different places. That will not be your portion this year. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Mental laziness shall be far from you. Amen. You will be able to think clearly. Amen. I say you will be able to think clearly. Amen. You will not be starved of wisdom this year. Amen. You will receive ability to resolve complex situations. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, somebody say it better, amen. amen. Yeah, very important. Also, if you are emotionally drained or emotionally derailed, that's a sign that your strength is depleted. Consistently emotionally drained. Emotionally wearied or weak. You are disengaged from most of the things happening around you. Disengaged at home. Sometimes it's engaged at work. You're trying to find your passion again. 
it's not there. You can't even say, uh, I, I'm deploying my passion towards anything. That is uh, emotionally uh, wearied or drained. It can lead to depression, anxiety attack, panic attack, drifting into besetting sins and all kinds of addictions, things that you left in 1984 can come back, you know, <laughs> struggles that you left behind 10 years ago can start to show up again because you are emotionally drained and weak. You become a target of the devil. You know, the scripture says, <laughs> It says, be vigilant, be sober. I said, for your adversary, the devil, walking about, seeking who he might devour. It means that the devil cannot devour everybody. He's looking for targets. Yeah. And sometimes, what the devil is looking for are weary people emotionally or spiritually. Yeah. Weak emotionally. Weak spiritually. Those are targets. The devil cannot, if he can devour everybody, he will not need to look. He will just pounce, pounce, pounce. But the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That means it's not everybody whom he may devour. And his target is usually people who are mentally perplexed, emotionally drained or derailed, or spiritually lethargic. Yeah. People who are spiritually lethargic. Who succumb to all kinds of things spiritually. Unaware spiritually. You know, some people they only are only aware of the earthly trend. They don't know spiritual trend or heavenly trend. So ask you now what is trending on Twitter, you know. What is trending on Instagram, you know. What is trending in the throne of grace? You don't know. Eh? On the throne of grace. What is trending in heaven? You don't know. What is heaven saying now? The Bible says in the last day, the Spirit speaks expressly. Let him that have hear to hear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. But you can be in church, but you are only aware of what is trending on earth. You don't know what is trending in heaven. You don't know what is trending in heaven. And it leads to spiritual liturgy because you are distracted. A spiritually liturgic person will be disobedient, subject to oppressions of the devil, like I said, will be fruitless spiritually and perpetually in lack of victory. Losing battles everywhere is a sign of spiritual weakness. Also, somebody can be spiritually fatigued, I mean, sorry, physically fatigued. That can lead to sickness, weakness, burnout, you know, on feet for fulfillment of destiny. I was saying in the other service that sometimes when I take a break, like a retreat, I gauge where I need to refill. Sometimes I take a retreat, a three day retreat. The first day is to eat well and sleep well. I won't even fast. The next, next two days I can be fasting. Because you can't be coming before the throne of grace and be frowning because you are tired and you are hungry. I learned that sense many years ago. Refresh yourself. It's the same God in 1 Kings 18 that told Elijah, Elijah, eat for the journey is far. And God cornered him and sent angels to feed him well. And then Elijah's sense starts to return. All the fear and anxiety from Jezebel start to, started to leave him just because he ate. If you want to spiritualize, he said, uh, spiritual food, because it was angels that fed him. You eat physical food first. You are malnourished physically. You don't have strength. Yeah. Chasing appointment to appointment. You know, some people just forget to even eat. Yeah. You are working hard. You are not eating well. And you say it's village people. It's not village people. You are the village person. Yeah. <laughs> Work hard, eat well. Gain physical strength and then let God add a super to your natural. Yeah. Or let the natural be there. Are you still with me today? Very important. 
So when I'm not fasting, you eat well. Prepare because the journey is far. When you need to rest, rest well. So in that kind of situation, that first day, I will eat three course meal breakfast, sumptuous lunch, sleep. And the next day, we'll start fasting and prayer. Even when you appear before God that next day, even God is happy <laughs> because you are looking happy. And the Bible says, enter into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart, into his court with praise. You can't come frowning. God is not your enemy. Yeah. God is not your enemy. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Come into his presence with energy, rejoicing. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. It's very important, very important, very important. In Genesis 49, there's a description here from verse 22. Jacob was about to die, to go to heaven here, and he was praying over his sons and prophesying over his 12 sons. Jacob, I mean, sorry, Joseph was a, is the poster child or image of the family, the one who God used to sustain all of them. And when he got to Joseph, look at the description and the words that he spoke. Joseph is a fruitful bar. A fruitful bar by a well. I mean, the well, where water comes from. Its branches run over the wall. Next verse, quickly. The acres are bitterly grieved him, shot at him, and hated him. See, you go through things in life. Akas will target you. They did that to Joseph. His brothers, even the people he trusted, hated him. They bitterly gripped him, the scripture says, and shot at him. Jacob was aware, and he was saying this on his deathbed. But look at the next verse. It says, but the, the, the bow, his bow remained in strength, and the hand of his hands were made strong by the hand of the mighty God of Jacob. There's a way the God of Jacob shows up in the affairs of your life. It strengthens your hand for battle. Yeah. Your bow is made strong so you can shoot arrows in the spirit. God strengthens. That's what I'm saying. You cannot go through the kind of things that Joseph went through in his life with you know, all kinds of household wickedness, all kinds of, he just looks at everywhere. He, he was in Potiphar's house, Madame of the house came up with another trouble. You know, after a while, you just get so weary. So weary. But God gives strength. Say amen, somebody. Amen. He gives strength. He gives strength. I've been in situations in my own life that I felt weary. Weary. Sometimes God will tell you to do something, it looks like God wants to kill me. Sometimes in your marriage, your marriage looks like it's set up for you to die. Because you just feel like this person looks like a permanent coconut head. And God says, I should be living with this person. You understand what I'm saying? And it just looks, it, it, it just looks like a, a bad setup, a bad baggage. In marriage sometimes, in business life, you just meet wicked people sometimes who, who just want to shortchange you, throw you the curveball all the time. And it's like, God, what's going on here? Joseph was there. But God strengthened him. Strengthened him. Strengthened him. Strengthened him. His bow remained in strength. The arm of his hand were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. May this become your testimony. Amen. I said, may this become your testimony. Amen. You are not of, of them that draw, draw back onto perdition. You are of them that are strengthened of God. Can I encourage somebody here? You'll never get tired of hearing my own story. Yeah. Last December, we celebrated 20 years of marriage. But in the fifth to sixth year of our marriage, my wife is here this morning, she can bear witness we almost agree to go apart. Personally, I was weary. She was weary too. But God gave us strength. Yeah. 
Because I, I can imagine if we went apart then, what would happen 15 years down the line now? What, what would happen? I'm saying this to encourage somebody here. You can be fatigued, weary, and drained maritally. Go for strength. The God will give strength. He said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength perfects your weakness. Yeah. All this going around, eh, eh, always complaining. Eh, 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 eh. It's not working. Huh? It's not working. It will work. Mm. The business will work. The marriage will work. In the name of Jesus. You will progress on that career path. Uh, that person you are calling wicked boss this year, God will use that same wicked boss to lift you to the next level. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You know how Joseph could have dropped out of destiny by saying, you know, I can't handle all this. This is too much. This is too much. This is too much. You know, if somebody was Joseph, they would commit suicide in prison. Your brothers chased you out of your father's house, sold you out to slavery, you know, threw you in the pit and all that. You now got to Potiphar's house. It looks like things were getting better. One wicked madam now came and said, lie with me, lie with me. He said, I'm not doing it. It's not by force. Yeah? And then all of a sudden, lied on you. They now threw you into prison. They just say, Father, unto your hand I commit my soul. Yeah. Because it gets too much sometimes. Am I saying the truth today? Just gets too much sometimes. That's when you need to know him as the glory and the lift up of your head. For thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. You're my glory, you lift my head. Can we sing it one more time? For thou, O oh Lord, for thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory, you lift my hand. Somebody celebrate the glory and the lift up of your head. Celebrate the glory and the lift up of your head. Hallelujah. Very quickly as I wrap up, two things that you must be aware of if you want to live in strength. Recognize, one, that you have sustained capacity for growth. In God, you have sustained capacity for growth, uh, sustained capacity for continuous wealth creation and living a life of impact. It's a sustained capacity. Sustained capacity. One thing that is certain in this world is that if there's a man or a woman to walk with God, your growth cannot stop. I learned something last year that radically transformed my life. The scripture says, to him that believes, nothing shall be impossible. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. It means the problem will never be with God. The problem is in my capacity to believe and walk by faith. Yeah. And scripture says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. My capacity to grow my faith is infinite. So I can work with God at any level. My responsibility is to leverage the sustained capacity for growth. The sustained capacity for growth. The sustained capacity for growth. And stop giving excuses. So we access the supernatural strength I mean, we have access to supernatural strength and speed in God. We can access it. We can access it. We have sustained capacity for growth. It's when we start to look away and look at ourselves, look at in our own strength, look to the wrong places, look to ungodly alternatives. We start to limit our capacity for faith. A capacity for growth. Jesus described, you know, all kinds of, uh, of, um, of faith in the scriptures. Little faith, no faith, weak faith, different encounters that he had with people in the Bible. The, the, the Canaanite woman with a, a, a daughter who was asking Jesus to heal her daughter when she said, 
healing his children's bread, and the woman said, no, dogs can eat from the crumb. Ah, Jesus said, this one is tenacious. He said, woman, how great is your faith? Centurion told Jesus, don't come to my house. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Ah, he said, I'm a man under authority. I said to one, go, and he goes. To another, come, and he comes. Jesus said, ah, how did you know all these things? How do you know that I can do that? You have so much faith in me. He said, great, I've not seen this kind of faith in Israel. Great faith. He was in, his, in the inner part of the boat, sleeping. The boat was rocking. Disciples were shouting, Jesus, don't you care that we perish? Oh, you have little faith. That's his own disciples. Uh, you can be a disciple and refuse to go your faith. <laughs> yeah. Tap your neighbor, say it's time to grow your faith. <laughs> so your faith is inelastic. Uh, it can go to any length. Or oh, it's elastic, sorry. Yeah, your faith is elastic. It can grow to any level. You can stretch it to any point you want. Say 2024, stretch it. Or tell somebody, say in 2024, stretch it. Glory be to Jesus. Somebody this year, you'll get an instruction. Something that will stretch your faith. Don't run away from it. Focus on building your faith. Stop running away from big things. Focus on your faith. Yeah. If you want to walk with God, don't run away from big things. Just focus on your faith. Yeah. Focus on building your own faith. That's why we can't call prayer and fasting and you will not show up. Yeah. It means you are not giving focus to building your faith. They that seek him early shall find him. That's what the scripture says. Where is your own early? Is it November? Because we won't fast in January. Where's the early? Except you have done your own 20 days in December. Uh -huh. I hope you understand what I'm saying. It's important. You know, I said that file is somewhere. We'll open it. We're opening it small, small. Praise God. <laughs> I said, praise God. So it's important for us to understand that when we develop that sustained capacity, then speed comes to us. Speed comes to us. But I need to warn somebody here. As we talk about divine speed often this year, please recognize that divine speed is not for competition, but the fulfillment of God's kingdom agenda. We are not running for competition. It's that God wants to showcase his faithfulness through your life when he gives you speed. When you trust God for speed, not because you want to be ahead only of your colleagues, no. You want to be the most blessed among your friends? No. It's that God wants to showcase his faithfulness through you so that when other people ask you, you can tell them it is God working and this is how I work with God. And you too can come to this level of speed. But this one I say speed, speed, speed because you want to be looking at everybody behind. Eh? The I better pass my neighbor's syndrome in Africa is destroying us. Yeah, we need to, the Christians have to change it. We have to change it. Everybody can be blessed. Yeah. If you walk with God, everybody can be blessed. Yeah. Glory to Jesus. We have speed all through the Bible. In 1 Kings 18, Elijah had thrown the chariots of Ahab. God's speed. In Genesis 24, verse 12, the servant of Abraham prayed one prayer. One prayer. One. And before he finished praying, God answered that prayer. Genesis 24, verse 12, 13, and 14. A man was on a project commissioned to go and get a wife for Isaac, the first son, you know, the son of promise, the son of promise for Abraham. You know, Abraham was painstaking about Isaac marrying from his lineage and sent this man to the place where his family members were. They had no idea what they looked like. The man had never, has never met them before. And then when he got there in Genesis 24, he just said, or, uh, 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 he said one prayer, one prayer. Then he said, oh Lord God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. And in verse 13, verse 13 quickly, he said, behold, here I stand by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be 
let it be that a young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that, that I may drink. And she says, drink, and I will also give your camels drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master, that you are, because of the covenant of Abraham, I will enjoy speed. The Bible says, and it happened. It happened before he had finished speaking. Somebody, before you finish speaking this year, God will show up. Yeah. You will enjoy unusual speed. Yeah. Said, before he has finished speaking, behold, that behold, Rebekah, who was born to Betuel, son of Milcah, the wife of now, Abraham's brother, came out with a picture on her shoulder. The woman was a beautiful, very beautiful uh, to behold, a virgin, no one had known her. And she went down to the well, filled a pitcher, and came up. And uh, uh, the, the servant ran to meet her and said, please give me drink, a little water uh, to drink from your pitcher. And she said, drink, my Lord. When you hear that statement, it means God has done it. Drink, you will hear drink, my Lord, this year. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. When you get into that office, you will hear drink, my Lord. Uh, when you get into that board meeting, you will hear drink, my Lord. When you go to that foreign country for, for, for a meeting, you, you will be received with drink, my Lord, testimony. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bible says, then she quickly let down her pitcher to her hand and gave him to drink. And when he had finished drinking, <laughs> when he has finished drinking, she said, without him asking, I will draw water for your camel also until they are finished drinking. That's it. You read further, you see it. The man just broke into Thanksgiving. The deed is done. You cannot be on one project for how long? Eh? God has more projects for you. Things will happen fast for you this year. God will answer your prayers this year. It will happen with speed. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Lastly today, as so you go into this year, please remember, you are an eager believer. You are enjoying speed without exhaustion. So you need to leverage the opportunity for renewal and revival. Yeah. We have access to revival, access to renewal. Access to revival, access to renewal. Access to revival, access to renewal. And we must leverage it. What do you do when you feel weak? Rely on God, the source of our strength. That's what you do. I will look up to the hills from where cometh my help. My help comes from above. When you feel weak, look unto him. Look unto him. They look unto him and they were lighting. And their face was not ashamed. Thank you for listening. We hope you are truly blessed. Please feel free to email us at info at elevationng.org for all inquiries or to share any testimonies. You can also follow us on our social media channels at Elevation NG to have access to real-time updates on all broadcasts and special programs. Till we come your way again, keep making greatness common.